What's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. Today I'll be taking a look at Serato Sample, which is a new plugin used for slicing, time stretching, and changing the key of samples. I'll be using it with Ableton Live, of course. Um, and what I really wanted to do by testing this plugin out is to see what made it different than uh, Ableton Simpler, because you know with the latest Ableton Live update, Simpler's been very nasty, especially with the through mode and be able to chop up samples and have different sensitivities and a lot of cool functions that that has for traditional hip hop loop slicing. However, Serato is its own beast and this will be my second or third time loading it and I'm starting to find that these two both uh, complement each other and perhaps even have very different functions. So we'll be exploring that today. Um, I'm using a 31 day trial. I didn't buy it yet. I'm considering it, um, but you can go to their website, download it for Mac or Windows and use it for 31 days so you can make your own decision. So let me go ahead and load this into Ableton Live on a MIDI track. It's gonna look like this. And basically you just drag and drop a sample from your browser. And I'll go through a few. I like that one too. Let's try this. So right now it's playing real slow in the browser because my tempo's at 60, but I'll speed it up. But before I do that, a few things I want to bring your attention to. A, by default sync is turned on, you could turn it off. And what sync does is it matches the sample and the playback to your host tempo, which is 60. So you'll notice if I change this to 80, which I should, it'll automatically jump to 80. You have half time and double time if you want to manipulate how fast this thing plays it. And that's uh, critical. It's its ability to time stretch. Um, this is the kind of function that people who use machine really want. And maybe even the Akai users. I think they may have had uh, time stretch in their latest update. But I'll show you what the big deal is. So first things first, let me set a, a loop point. <laughs> the only thing that throws me off about this program is these pads, right? You get these set of pads, and if you hit a key on your keyboard, it'll automatically assign a slicer, depending on the playback position, to the key on your keyboard. So it's like on-the-fly mapping, which is dope, but it could also be very confusing. Because if you're using a function like find samples, like it just did, it puts this random marker and as you're looking for that marker, you just start putting marks all on the keyboard and you're all confused. But it's middle C is what it starts on first. So that I gotta get used to or read the documentation about. The, the fine samples doesn't seem, not, not necessarily not good, but we're so used to the Ableton Simpler where it just chops the transients. This doesn't quite do that for some reason. Second thing, once we have that, and I have it on middle C, so it's doing kind of like a live stretch, that new feature that, uh, not live stretch, live slicing, kind of like what Machine just added and the Akai's been had, where as it's playing or you trigger it to play, you hit a different key and it makes a new slice marker. Kind of weird. So middle, and now I'm gonna change it to half time and make this 40 beats per minute. Or double time. And it has a really clean sound. And that's why a lot of people use Serato as far as mixing records in their DJ software. It has a really clean time stretch and if I'm not mistaken, maybe some of those slowdowns we hear on Timbaland's beats is actually Serato, the, the DJ program, and not so much Ableton Live. Um, Ableton Live has a clean time stretch too on Complex and Complex Pro, but it starts to get grainy. But you'll see when I half time this and turns 40, it doesn't do that here. And I'll try 20. You hear that? It's a little bit more smooth. It reminds me of the Electron Octa track. And that's cool by itself. If you put it on a regular tempo track. Another cool thing about this is that it automatically detects the key of the sample. And this is where this plugin shines. 
because once you know the key of it, in this case C minor, you can then change it to uh, another key that you're working with. Remember, when you're mixing and matching samples, you have minors with minors, majors with majors. Sometimes you can um, overlap minors and majors if you know the relative key of each other, like the relative key of uh, C minor or E B major or you know A minor and C major. If you have that kind of knowledge and you can find the notes that overlap, you can do that. But I find it more practical just to load the same type of samples, all minors, all majors. So I'm going to record that loop real quick, just a real simple straight ahead. And then I'm going to layer something else with it. And it plays um, the sample or that particular slicer according to duration of how long you're holding that note, which is cool. I don't know if it has a through mode like Ableton where you just hit it once and it plays the whole sample. That'd be cool if they added that as well for the kind of stuff that I do. But you can always go in and draw and extend the notes manually like you do with most of the samplers. And you change the key on the fly. So we have that. So let's go ahead and add another instance. And this time let's try drum loop, which was really cool to me when I saw that it um, detected the key of drum loops, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. So let's go in here. Or maybe something like that, that's a little bit harder. Click find samples. And you see how that did that differently when I hit find samples to give us more keys or more transient points. Although <laughs> that's why I expect it to do all the time. It doesn't always do that. And I don't know the rhyme or reason behind that. And it does not appear that there's a uh, setting for you to be able to trigger how many transients it tries to find. Also the color coding I'm not familiar with. I don't know if that um, has to do with uh, amplitude or key even. If it is key, that's even doper. But um, like I said, I still have to review the uh, documentation on it. And then it does have poly mode so you can play a few at the same time. So that's cool too, you can stack up the samples on the fly. So let me see if I can get a nice little loop real quick in the key of A minor, like our main sample. Now what's even cooler, um, which I, I do like that they did that, is that each pad that you do get a slice assigned to has this individual filter in reverse that one which is J and we'll play the song backwards so that's cool that that's per pad another thing that's cool per pad is filter which is what I'm going to do to these drums take reverse off and you have them all in the same key so everything feels a little bit better and you also time stretch it, which is even more interesting. So let's see if I do half time. <laughs> so those are the main functions, and also there's a favorite key where you can favorite the sample that you like a lot. So say for instance, that one where I have that is reversed. I can go ahead and make it a favorite so it stands out to you. But again, that's kind of tricky because we don't know what key that corresponds to in your MIDI controller. 
So I got to talk to them about that to see if they can kind of do what Battery did, where it has their convention, but also within the pad shows you which MIDI note or uh, piano key this corresponds to. That would be very helpful, especially for a lot of new users. So I'll go ahead and insert a new MIDI track. We'll go ahead and grab another Serato plugin instance. And this plus and minus is just a zoom view. So you can find zero crossings or you can see the whole sample at once. And this is C sharp minor, so let's go back to A minor. Cool, so that'll work. The string is in harmony with the rest of it. And then quantize it to make sure those chops on the end are fine and in time with everybody else. Let's try to slow this down though. What key is that? I'm using S. Or even faster. And since it's faster, it's playing more of the sample, so I can shorten it. All right, let's get something else. We're coming along pretty good here. A lot better um, than I thought as far as being unprepared. But sometimes you learn the best when you're just freestyling it. It's easy for someone to put a whole track together and be like, boom, that's how I did it. <laughs> but to watch them think and go through it might be more valuable to certain people who enjoy the longer videos. So now we have like strings and we have like this haunting drone sound. I'm looking for something that stands out a little bit more like a piano, bell, a guitar type thing. Or horns. <laughs> Change this bad boy to A minor. Find samples. It doesn't find any. That's, that's what's so trippy about this plugin. I don't know the rhyme or reason for why it picks the samples it picks versus the ones it doesn't. It just doesn't make... That's just weird. Right? Like I'm dry, I'm scrubbing it because it's like the Serato DJ program, and then you can drag it to the transient. I guess that's where we get into the zooming. So we can just drag it up and then hit the key. Like <laughs> Serato man, call me man. Don't send your killers out for me, Serato. Call me man. We need to talk about this, this auto chop. <laughs> well, but, but, but that's one of the things that's interesting because if you do find that's a limitation, for me, it's not going to be a limitation because we can work around it. It takes a little bit more time. But where it's valuable is that if you don't want to go through all of this, you can use it just for the other features, um, the time stretch, the tempo, and all of that, especially outside of Ableton because Ableton doesn't necessarily, uh, well, Ableton doesn't necessarily need these because like I've been using Keep Finder and Ableton's time stretch on its own. Although it takes a little bit longer because you have to export the loops and bring them back in and out. But you can do that, match all the keys of all your samples, set the first MIDI note down, record it as an audio file or an Ableton resample it, and then throw it in the simpler and chop it. Once you're, you know, being able to demonstrate what tempo you want it, what speed you want it, what key it needs to be in, and then we can go back into a simpler workflow. Um, if I need to make a video showing you what I mean by that, let me know in the comments and I'll do that. I'll make a video specifically using Serato, what it's good for, and then going back into Ableton workflow, a strictly Ableton workflow, so to speak. But anyway, let's see if these chops are chromatic. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it to kind of play a call response with the synthesizer that's already in that first sample.
All right, so let's have some more fun. Let me see if I can get a voice sample, kind of tie this all together so it makes sense. And maybe I'll add real drums, so to speak. No. Do I know you? <laughs> and now it finds more slices. <laughs> that, that'll drive me crazy. That's dope. <laughs> it, it's not a traditional beat, but I like it. I like that it allows you to do that, to take samples anywhere in your library, throw them together, and do whatever you want with them. And what's more importantly is that they're in key, and this is hard in Ableton Live. This is the only thing that I give Serato the plus one over, is that now that I have it like this, and everyone's in, uh, I think I put everybody in A minor, at least I hope I did. Yeah, you could speed it up and it'll keep that pitch. That's the difference. That's a big deal, especially if you like that was sounding slow. So I wanted to speed it up. But you know, if you're using Repitch in Ableton Live and you speed it up, the pitch changes. If you're using Complex and Complex Pro, a little bit better. But at the same time, you can't just change that on the fly. Like you, Ableton Live by itself is better if you can hear perfect pitch. Having an anal analyzation tool like Serato has is, helps a lot of people like me who don't have per um, perfect pitch hearing so we could set it and forget it basically all right that'll work Pretty much it, man. Um, <laughs> this is crazy sounding, man. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so as you can see, this plugin is a lot of fun. And like, if you wanted to, we'll do one more example. Let's uh, let's change it from A minor to something else. Let's go across each one and uh, uh what's another key that they always use, like G minor, right? But I'm going to go up, so it's going to be a different pitch when I do this. And you can go up or down to find your key, of course, because you know there's 12 steps. Um, it just depends on what you want to do. And what sounds best. Which, which, which is funny that a lot of people pose that argument about me doing videos and being very technical. Um, it, a lot of people feel like it takes away from feeling in the human element of having a procedure. But here's the thing. The procedure is to help you understand things that are not always verbalized. Like a lot of creative people can't intellectualize the decisions they make. However, it always goes back to the human element. What sounds right? What feels right? So having a technical understanding of music or anything creative, even art in 3D, um, the other stuff that I do, um, you have to know that to kind of set yourself above the rest from others. Like it's really important to know why do people do what they do? Um, Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's more of a philosophy or sociology type of perspective that I have about all things in life, understanding the root causes of things. And then you can break those rules. So basically, you learn the rules, you learn the parameters of the game, and then you play the game, and then you exceed at it, you break the rules, and you become an anomaly. That's just me, though. So I just randomly set these all to different levels um, as far as octave goes and pitch but they're all set to G minor now. So let's hear what that sounds like.
so now that's it. <laughs> so it gave us a whole different vibe. It's actually more livelier in that key, for whatever reason. But it's cool, man. You get to do stuff like that. You get to change your mind at the last minute. You get in a situation like if you're in a studio or you're in a circumstance where you're working with the artist and they sing in a different key, um, you can change the key of the song to match their key. So you, you record their hook or a phrase of their song, analyze the key of their voice, and then match everything, and then have them do the song. So it's, it, it's dope, man. Like, I just The only thing I regret about programs like this is that you wish the elements that work for you were in the program that you use so you don't have to deal with the latency issues and compatibility and um, some of the other things that you may not need, so to speak. You wish it was more module-based, which is probably what the future is going to be anyway. But um, anyway, man, if you have any other questions or concerns about this program, um, like I said, this is my second time really ever using it, but it's really intuitive and I'm speeding through it pretty fast. Um, and also people with perfect pitch. I know some of these samples might be tuned a little different, but like I said, you can decrease it by sense if you need to, if you feel like it's not perfect, perfect. So they have that option for you. Um, like I said, it's a 31 day trial. If you want to try it out for yourself to see if something that you want to add to your arsenal. Um, and then of course, to get all these different samples, man, there's so much, uh, vinyl out there on ebay like ebay has a lot of dope vinyl your goodwills and your thrift stores in your local area has a lot of vinyl and what you do is just get one of those usb turntables that convert everything to wave or mp3 for you and just throw it into your browser and then as far as chopping them goes you just spend like some of your downtime or some of your beat block days and just take out perfect loops try to get the loops as perfect as possible like two bars and four bars so you don't have to worry about <laughs> auto slicing, picking the wrong downbeat or transient. And of course there's people out there, private collectors who have blogs and VIP access to certain samples. And I have quite a few friends like that, um, that you can dive into and find as well. A lot of these companies are making samples. Us on Machine Masters, we take a lot of that hard work out for you by creating original samples. And that's cool too, because if you get a lot of the stuff that I do with Trapanese and some of the other developers have done, um, you can mix and match those the same exact way using loops more so than samples and create beats on the fly, chop up everything, man. It, it's, it's where the future sh is going, but it, <laughs> I think this is where, the where we should have started. As soon as turntablism and computers came about, man, and kind of married each other in the early 2000s, this should have took place because hip hop, EJ and uh, MTV and them al almost already had this kind of thing. But these developers have been like prolonging the techno apocalypse for some reason. They don't want us to be musical. And I think it's because they're musicians. And I think that's what the argument is. Like if you're a developer who's a purist or musician, you don't want to add these functions because you you take for granted the, the genius that you need to even pick the right samples and the, the flavor you need to even make these things work. Like that's not something you could teach anyway. But they... they I can sense behind the scenes that they um, intentionally withheld a lot of this technology because this stuff is not, to be honest and fair to everyone involved, this is not cutting edge. Like literally, I think Tractor does this. <laughs> anyway, that's crazy. Tractor has real time time stretch, but they won't put that in machine. That bothers me. Um, Serato's had it, of course, but I don't know, man. It, it, it's a, It's really weird whatever the reasons and logistics are behind it. But we're finally getting there. 2020 is gonna be a hell of a year for software, man. I think a lot of this stuff is gonna get cleaned up and um, us making videos like this is gonna show the developers um, how we use it and how to make it b better suited towards us. So I look forward to that. But anyway, thank you for checking out the video. Um, subscribe if you're not subscribed, share it on social media. Um, you can follow me at MG the Future. I appreciate you guys. Until next time.